Hello everyone, Dan 14th Prime here. I want to do a video share out today with you guys on the Transformers Studio Series number 35. This is the leader class Jetfire figure as seen in the movie Revenge of the Fallen. Very, very cool figure here. Uh, the very iconic Blackbird plane being his alt mode. And I think they've done just a great job with the movie likeness of this figure like we've never seen before. Very well done. Really happy with the figure. If you're interested in picking them up, check the link in the description below. Be sure to follow my Amazon page. I've got all kinds of Transformers out there all categorized for you. Check back often. Pick these guys up when they're in stock at a good price. Also, follow my Instagram, same handle, Dan14thPrime, where you've already seen some pics of this guy posted up earlier this week. The cool gimmick of this toy is that he combines with the new Voyager class Optimus Prime. I get that figure tomorrow, so today we're going to focus on just Jetfire here in front of you do a separate video for that cool combination with Voyager Optimus Prime. All right, let's dive in and check this figure out. Quick overview of the figure here before we dive in close on those details. Again, leader class figure, just fantastic details through the face, which we'll look at closer, the legs with the thrusters and everything look cool. He comes with an axe and, of course, his cane there in his left hand. I will say you'll see he looks good in both his modes. This is a great bot likeness in the plane, comes together very well. And you can see in bot mode here, it all looks natural like the movie, and yes, there's plane parts, but there's not a lot of big, chunky kibble. What they've done with this figure is a really nice job with the panels, where you have many folds in these panels, so everything tucks away and folds away nice and neat. Okay, let's jump in on his head sculpt, and it is just so cool. The beard, the whiskers, the hair, the face, and this wash over it, this nice silver paint and washed over it. Looks so, so good. All this is kind of like a rubberized plastic, so no worries about breaking all that. My only complaint is the eyes look a bit dead. I wish they might have made those pop a bit more. But man, the sculpt there and the, the, the little hat he has with the airplane part, it just looks so good. Look at that profile. Look at that beard. Really great job with the head sculpt. One of the best. You know, it's a big face to work with, but definitely one of the better head sculpts and face that I've ever seen on a mass release Transformers toy. Then you can just check out all the great detail. I mean, the plane is just so cool. They really have them in that sort of hunched over position, and you get all these plane parts up above over the top, which looks really great. Look at the arms here. I mean, there's like fine red wires in there and blue wires that they detailed into the upper shoulder. Come down, he's got some kind of yellow gold on the fingers there, some black accents inside of like the turbines in there. And then look at those engines on the legs. Nice silver paint. All through there, really well detailed. Some black accent paints on the feet. Just really, really cool. Great paint work, a lot of good sculpt. Very well detailed. You can see here in the lower section just all of this great silver accent paint through the thighs, which is going to be the jet boosters, and also in there through the crotch where there's all these kind of gears and everything working through. And when you get his head up out of the way underneath the chest there, a lot of good molding hidden away under there, some black accent paint. Sort of hidden away behind that big head, but still a lot of good detail behind there. On the profile here, you can see, again, pretty nice and clean. See all the cool wings coming off. A lot of good extra detail here with the silver trim. And then here when you go around the back of the arm, I guess he's got a double elbow, so who knows what's the back or the front. But you got some nice black armor there. Then again, you can see a lot of cool detail down into those legs. And then around back here, and you can position these wings and different, you know, plane parts any way you like. That's the way I like to do it. I think it looks cool. They could be folded up flat as well, but I think it looks better that way. But mainly just all nice, sleek, jet black going down the backside. In terms of accessories, you saw this at the beginning of the video. This is his cane, kind of pegged right into the palm of his hand. And this also is going to fold up to be his front landing gear in jet mode. Fun little accessory, definitely fits with the character from the movie. And then he also comes with this cool double-sided axe, nice silver paint on both edges of the blades. Always a number of places to store these things, but back here you do get a rectangular peg. Got a peg there on the handle, so you can store that right there off of the wing. And again on the hand, you get a hole right there kind of in the palm which is good for the axe, but you get one underneath in the middle of the palm there, which is really where you need to put the cane to get it flat on the ground. 
And then just for a bit of perspective across the line, and I still love what Studio Series is doing here with the scale variation. Grimlock, still our biggest leader class figure there. There you have Voyager Starscream. You swap him out and put Megatron there. And then if we bring in Optimus over here, gives you some sense of where he fits in. He's sort of a blackout size leader class figure who's currently in chopper mode. Let's go through articulation quickly. The head you know, kind of looks up by looking out like that. Kind of strange, but you know, that's what it does for transformation. Can't really look down, uh, but then spins, you know, like this, basically. So that's the main head movement you get. And it kind of rocks on there as well. And again, these things for transformation, they'll move a bit for you. His shoulders here is going to rotate all the way around up there. That pivots all the way around. Got a joint there that'll, that'll hinge. And he's got a bicep swivel up there just above the elbow. And he's got an elbow. You know, depending on which way you have the arm face, and it'll go like that. And if you have it going the other way, it'll go like this. So kind of whatever you're using to the top. And it often depends on the wrist because the wrist just spins here at the hand and then only hinges like right here. I guess he's got a couple hinges because it transforms. But you're fine when you're using the uh, the cane. You know, his arm's got to be basically like that. Nothing at the waist or, or anything. And then the legs here, you know, go back. You can probably move all this stuff around, but I think it's pretty good articulation there at the hip. And he'll split out like that as well. That's good. You see these things just fly, flopping off. Uh, there's really no kind of swivel or anything up there. You know, it's for transformation. You can get a little bit of that, I guess. It's going to get a little bit messy. There's so much going on with the legs as it is. Uh, the knee, it's got a joint there, as well as a joint lower down here. And that spun, as we know, for transformation. So you can kind of go like that and go like that if you wanted to. And then the ankle here rocks like this. And then rocks side to side as well. So, you know, it's pretty good overall. So let's go ahead and transform Jetfire. I've already taken the accessories off, of course. Let's start off just by taking off these little rubberized accents. Just peg into the side of his chest there. Just pull those down so you can get it so they don't get in the way of the legs. Bottom of the foot here, fold in the black toe and then just pinch the foot in half, basically. Come around to this side panel sitting off the hip here. It's on a double hinge and just pull it, rock it so it's straight out. Mine's kind of already there, just so you get clearance. Because what you want to do then is rotate the leg in. So it sort of jogs a bit to the inside, you see that? And now you can bring this panel, again, double hinge, bring that down and make it flush and flat to where we just saw that little gap. And bring up your wing, probably do that first even. Bring up your little flap. On the lower leg here, we have a peg here, and there is a hole that will go in right here. Kind of kind of rotate that around so it gets in the right way. Kind of bring the foot up so you can get that peg together. And then there's a peg here on the bottom of the foot that goes on the inside of the thigh. Peg those together. You'll find this thing has a lot of pegs that are kind of fickle, and, and you'll need to play with them to really get everything Perfect at the end has always been my experience. So again, uh, I'm kind of already out there with that double hinge sort of off of the hip. Rotate inwards. And you might just want to pull out that leg to help. And again, it creates this little jog effect in the thigh section, which you then flip up the wing and fold this down. Double hinges are tricky sometimes. There we go. Again, come back to the bottom of the foot. Black toe goes in, foot folds in half, come down here. We want to rotate and just get this foot pulled inside. Rotate that so it's pegged. You can see how that all kind of starts to come together. And again, I always find myself kind of jiggling it a little bit once I get it close to get things to fit together how I want. There's a peg here and a peg here on the plain parts. And again, the middle part of the foot pegs right into the engine there. So we're like this now with the legs all kind of folded up, and we'll come back to those. Next, we want to extend the torso. It's just going to kind of 
pull out of here on a hinge. Little backpack comes off there and just extend this nice and straight all the way through and just get everything flat. His head's gonna go underneath just for orientation for you. So we have all this flat. Go ahead and pop the shoulder pieces out of the pegs up there, which then helps you to rotate that flat so you're starting to get more of a flat plane. And the head's gonna go down. Pull this over and just start to unfold your panel. So one panel there and again, panel here, like I mentioned, nice use of panels. Get this thing going for us. That's just kind of lays right over the top of all that. So you kind of have a faux piece here where all his head stuff was and the real jet part goes right over the top. These uh, just collapse in like so. Come down here. We're basically just making all the top of the plane here, of course. That folds up like this. And then these pieces fold down like so. And again, lots of little clicky panel things. We then take him, let's kind of flatten this out, start to come underneath. These pieces come together up here, though you'll probably need to come back to that and make it perfect. But you sort of have that going for the top of the jet. Come underneath, spin the hands around. There's a big obvious round peg there on the forms. So you want to spin the hand, the palm of the peg there is going to go right into that form peg. I find a lot of the pegs just, they pop loose. They, they're just not great. One of the knocks on the figures, you can get it to transform and, and hold, but these pegs, there's many of them. They're not really nice securing tabbed pegs. Bring the, the shoulders down the rest of the way. Also, there's a lot of what I'd call um, blind pegs where you're really struggling to see what you're pegging in, which right here, back of the peg on the form there, and a little peg here on this black plane piece. You know, you're kind of like, good luck, you know? The good thing is you don't have to have it in there. Often I find it doesn't stay even when I do. Um, so these arms, if you more or less get them where they need to be, you're going to be okay. Just get them all nice and down. But there is a peg there on the back of that form really try to secure it again it's it's tough to see there i got it i guess the side angle is the best to try to see it so they are pegged for the moment we come up to the head we can go ahead and there's a peg on the top of his head and again one of these pegs on the top of the plane super difficult to see but this one you will feel actually peg in good his beard sort of folds up so these things are on something that kind of lets them flare out and lets them fold in. So you want to fold the beard in. Then if we come underneath here, all that's really left to do is split, split the crotch there. And you want to just like flatten that out. And then you're just going to rotate down the legs the rest of the way. Position those like so. You can rotate these down underneath. And what these are going to do is kind of slide in here and here's all the key pegs like there's a peg here that goes into the shoulder never likes to stay for me uh, and a peg here that is going to go into this leg piece so you want to slide this in there and get both of these pegs okay even when i get them they they rarely stay but you can still get it to look okay even if they don't and again same thing over here on this side slide that in there and there's a peg there with the shoulder and the leg. And then last thing before we go into the uh, landing gear is we grab these little bits again, peg, side of the wing. So these just sort of get, get put somewhere. Doesn't really add much to the plane, but they tuck away a bit. Then if we grab the landing gear, and let's just fold this up, it's gonna go like this, and it's gonna go with the point towards the head. And you can just kind of wedge that down in there. And you can fold it back up. So that's all the movements. And then for me, it's always just a little bit of the panel cleanup stuff. And I find sometimes if you just sort of like rock the things around a bit, uh, you get things to settle in a little bit nicer. So that's what I'll do, and I'll be right back. So well, here we have Jetfire in his very cool Blackbird spy plane. Just looks so cool. Just all nice jet black with the red accent trims. Got this little skunk icon there. 
on the fins, which we'll take a look at. The cockpit looks really cool, all kinds of detail up in there. Kind of catch the nose of that plane. Some yellow accent dots up there by the cockpit as well. See the engines, the thrusters all look really cool. But yeah, you know, a lot of panels, uh, not the easiest to fit together, and not everything likes to stay tabbed, but it all just sort of sit together still pretty well, and definitely a sharp looking plane. I will say, if you like this plane, you think it's cool, you definitely need to check out the uh, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base Museum in uh, Dayton, Ohio. It's got a Blackbird and more. It's got like, it must have a hundred planes, so really cool Air Force Museum. Definitely recommend you checking that out if that's within a drive for you, or if you're ever in the area. A cool cockpit here, all kinds of really fine, small red detailing there. Who knows what that says? Again, the black all looks really cool. It's light glossy, but not super high gloss. But lots of good panel work, you know, detailed through there and design work. You can see all the red accents there. There you've got your little skunk on the tail fin, 17972, the number on the fin there. Don't really see any Autobot or Decepticon logos on this guy. Take a look at all that nice grooved paneling through there. Looks great. The back here, the jet engines. You know how the crotch split there, I think, provides some nice accenting. Flip it underneath here. Not too bad. Again, that was the crotch that split. You got his hands there, but they've got like a booster effect kind of on the back of the hand, which looks cool. I think the feet fold away pretty well. So, you know, it doesn't entirely look like you just have a robot underneath an airplane. That's pretty cool. Again, the head tucks away up there. Landing gears, if I didn't say yet. You know, they flip out of there, out of the legs. So I had them down. You can flip those out of there. Again, the front gear. You can flip that up. And also, while we're down here, hole, hole, tab, tab on the axe. So you can store that right in there. Like that. Yeah, I definitely think this looks pretty good. Even those little shoulder accents with all the wires, you know, they play a nice role in there in jet mode. So definitely cool. I always loved this plane when I was a kid. Uh, my son loves this plane as well. He's seen it at the Wright-Patterson Air Force Base Museum. Brought back a souvenir one, and now he's got a transformer of one. So very, very cool. You can see Jetfire next to Blackout. I'm sure not perfect scale here. You know, Blackout shouldn't be as big as that plane. But just to give you some comparison, you know, they use bot mode as the main scale. And Blackout is about the same size as Jetfire in bot mode. One other accessory in the box is just this attachment piece for an Optimus Prime. I've heard this is because they're going to do a Dark of the Moon Voyager Prime off of the second Voyager figure, which combines with this Jetfire. So I believe this is for that. I don't believe this Jetfire combines with, with the Wrench of the Fallen first Voyager Prime, but check back in the second video where I do the combination and I'll let you know for sure. Like all Studio Series, Jetfire does come with the inbox little display stand. You have the Revenge of the Fallen desert battle scene there and if you want to stand him up on there it feels like he gets a bit more room he'll fit up there just like that so there you have it guys the transformer studio series leader class jet fire again retails for about 50 bucks I definitely recommend the figure again he's also got the combination gimmick with prime which we're yet to see so you get a lot of play value he looks great in both modes check the link in the description below check out my amazon page and pick this guy up if you're interested any shopping you do through those links supports the channel, no cost to you, and is very much appreciated. Again, check me out on Instagram, same handle, Dan14Prime, where you see figures first before they go up for review on YouTube, and lots of other fun stuff too. What's left to say about the guy? Love the figure. I recommend picking it up. I don't know if I had a favorite studio series up until now, but if I did, it's been replaced by this guy. This is a really, really great figure. Can't wait to try out the combination gimmick, so check back for that. Thanks for checking in. And I'll see you next time.